Welcome to this week's podcast episode. I brought on Lorenzo Roble. Lorenzo, welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Did I just butcher your last name? Nope, nope, you got it. Okay, I, think that, I, I butcher it when I try to say it, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, that was a tongue twister when it all came out. Anyway, uh, tell the listeners, where do you live and what do you do? So I am in Denver, Colorado. I'm out east a little bit, and I am a network marketer. So I'm a travel network marketer. We actually met, it was a couple months ago, but I joined a friend of mine for a quick, quick, inexpensive vacation to Mexico. Met you, of course, we're both in Denver, which was awesome. But I loved your backstory. So can you give a little more information about and what this whole rat pack thing is, but how you got started in your business? Yeah, so we so I got started in our, our profession when I was nineteen. I was in my freshman year of college up in northern Colorado, about an hour north of Denver. And um I didn't have any business background, didn't have any entrepreneurs in my family. I mean, it was just go to school, get a degree, go get a job pretty much my whole life. And so that was fine. That was just all I knew. And then um, my best friend called me up one night and said, Hey, got something you got to see and, and, uh, show me, uh, this travel idea. So we got excited about it. This is a chance to do something different. But once we got plugged in, you know, our business is very team centric. And so it's really what we're doing is building big sales teams, if you will. And so we were trying to figure out this kind of, uh, kind of creating our own identity within our, within our big company, something that would get our group excited since we were all 19 years old. We just figured, yeah, you know, rat pack retired at 20. You know, that sounds like a, um, a good a good name. So we just kind of ran with that since we weren't 20 yet. And um, we started kind of sharing that story at a lot of our presentations and sales meetings and stuff. And it just ended up um, getting a lot bigger than I think we originally thought it would. And maybe give a little background because some people might not know what network marketing is. Some people might have a negative idea about it. But what is it for you? And then this whole following your calling that you shared with me. Yeah. So we, you know, with our business, it's, you know, we, we sell a travel club membership and then we just kind of build a sales team around people selling the membership. So that's how we get paid to sell a membership. And then we get a little piece and override off of all of our team's sales and then a, a residual income off of people's monthly fees for their subscription. And so that's pretty much how it boils down to it. And, um, you know, it's no, no different than like a Mary Kay or Tupperware or Pampered Chef or, you know, there's thousands of network marketing companies. Ours is just travel. So it's, um, for us, it was just a little bit more exciting. So that was um, that's kind of what network marketing is about. And then we just kind of share it with our friends and family. And, and um, you know, when I saw this, it was kind of interesting just because I remember um, when I was going to college, it was about three months into school when um, my friend showed the business to me and that we ended up getting started with it. But even prior to that, I remember um, I met one of my really good friends, um, David, up at school who does the business with us now. He's one of our top producers in the whole company. But um, I remember hanging out with him before we saw a presentation just at the gym and we were just kind of, you know, just kind of hanging out, doing our pre warm up, and, uh, getting, you know, spinning on the bikes, just getting warmed up to, to do our workout. And it was pretty interesting because I just, uh, I looked at him and I'm like, I know what, I feel like we're supposed to, I just feel like we're supposed to do something big. I just don't know what it is. And he was like, you know, I kind of have felt the same way recently. So it was, it was kind of weird how it all lined up where we had this conversation. We just felt like we were supposed to be something a little bit bigger than kind of what we were on path to do. And then it wasn't a month later that my, my friend shared um, our business with us. And then we ended up getting started in it. And then it ended up getting as, as big as it did. But, um, you know, I think it all just kind of lines up with, you know, I'm a pretty faith centered person and, and uh, you know, I try to grow my faith a lot. And so kind of wherever God's leading me, let's try to, you know, I try to follow in suit with that, even though I'm not very good at that sometimes, but, um, I just, when I saw our company, I just felt like this is what I was supposed to be doing. And I didn't know why, didn't know what it was going to look like, what that process was. I just had this really strong piece about, you know, what I was doing and what I was getting involved with. And so we just started to pursue that. And it was just like the, the floodgates opened, so to speak. So, um, so kind of going to the calling thing, it's just, you know, whether you're a faith center person or whatever it is for you, just trying to get in alignment with you know, what it is that you think that you're supposed to be doing, um, even though it might not just be one thing and just kind of getting behind that. Because for me, since it's all very God centered, I just know that if God's got me on path to do something. And at that point, I'm not, it's the results of it are not up to me. So whatever that is for you is, is for you. But for me, it's like the, the, whatever the results are, that's, that's God's deal. I just got to go put in the work and just follow, um, you know, the steps, so to speak. 
And if I just do all this stuff that I'm supposed to do, then the results will just kind of take care of themselves. And so that's kind of how we've done the last, you know, 11 years in a, in a, in a nutshell. Well, and that's interesting approach because so many people, we are conditioned or trained societal norms to follow this traditional route of school, corporate, retire and die. And so for a lot of people, that's scary because there's so many uncertainties and unknowns. So how were you able to feel maybe the discomfort or the unknowns and to, to steer away from the traditional norms and go this different path that has been very lucrative and, and growth potential and everything for you? Yeah, it was kind of, it was a transition. You know, we got started, thankfully our business is, is very part-time to start with. And so we started at part-time and then it wasn't long after maybe a couple months that we went to a seminar in Minnesota where we, um, you just got to hang around some, some, some of the leaders within our company and really just see what was really possible. And once I saw, you know, everything that it could be, it was just like, you know, I just, I couldn't go back to, to the norm. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, once your mind has been expanded by a new idea, it can never really go back to its original form. And so once I saw like the other side of the fence, it was just like, man, I, I can't not give this a shot. And I have the kind of personality where it's just kind of like all or nothing. And um, even though we started a part time quickly after that seminar, I just decided, you know, what, I didn't like school anyway. So this just gave me a, a pretty good reason to drop out. So I ended up dropping out. Some of my friends ended up finishing school and they were equally as successful. But for me, I just wanted to go all in full throttle and just see what we could really do with it. And with that, you know, just because school was all I knew for, you know, the, the largest chunk of my life. And so, you know, I guess cutting the cord on school. I remember making that decision. It was definitely one of the more nerve wracking, scary moments that I've ever had. But again, kind of going back to, you know, it's like, if this is, you know, really where God is moving me, then I just, I, I just got to go with it. You know, it's like, he's not going to, he's not going to direct me somewhere and then just leave me hanging. And so I had peace and then I had peace in the decision, even though it was definitely scary because I was like abandoning everything I had ever grown up learning. Um, and then looking back on a hindsight, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but, uh, um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I guess just walking in faith is, you know, if you're an entrepreneur of any sort, you know, it's, it's going to be a very faith centered walk because there's a lot of unknowns that you have to pursue and you just got to be willing to go for it sometimes. Otherwise you look back and say, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Right. And, and my favorite quote is stop shitting all over yourself. <laughs> yeah. so question for you there how have you been able to embrace obviously you're very faith centered but maybe people who who might not relate to that or whatever how have you embraced the whole your faith has to be bigger than the fear yeah i think you you know whether it's faith it really a lot of goals you know like you like i i hadn't really I mean, I, I grew up playing sports and so I had certain goals within that, but I had never really been taught to like sit down and make goals and put pen to paper and create vision boards and really, you know, create a vision for what I wanted my life to look like. And I just think it's like, you know, the bigger your goals are, one of the, I heard this quote a little while ago and I loved it. It's just like, you know, you, you, you do what you fear the most because your goals demand it, you know, like your goals need to be so big that they demand that you, you know, kind of break out of that comfort zone. Otherwise you're going to stay put, you're going to stay average and, and that's not going to lead to a very fulfilling life. And so, um, so whether your faith, you know, whether it's God, the universe doesn't really matter what it is, you know, you just got to have goals in there and really create a vision for what you want your life to look like and make them so big that it really draws you out of that comfort zone. Otherwise you're not going to go do the scary things, which oftentimes the scary things are the best things for us, but we just have to, you know, we have to have enough of a reason why, of why we're going to go do that. Otherwise you just won't. You've hit on so many pain uh, points that I love to push, which is getting out of your comfort zone to have a strong why. And so question for you, how do you stay motivated and in the momentum? Is it a morning routine? Is it your, your circle? Like what do you do? Yeah. Um, motivation. I mean, it, it evolves over time, you know, as, as we've been fortunate to have more and more success over the years, you know, we have to have different goals and, and uh, reasons why we're doing stuff. And for me, I mean, it's hard for me to detach from my faith just because that's a big part of it. But, um, you know, because it's, it's created a very purpose driven on being able to help people and serve people and make a big impact. And, and you could do that no matter what your belief system is. But 
Um, as far as just like a daily routine, you know, I mean, if you, a good book that, that I read a while back, it's uh, the compound effect by Darren Hardy. And it just talks about, you know, there's, there's simple daily discipline and then there's small errors in judgment. And the, so it's not like one big thing that ever happens to us that makes or breaks us. It's all these little daily things that we do or don't do that ultimately lead to success or lead to failure. And so, you know, our daily disciplines, again, like you can't choose your results, but you can choose your habits, right? And if you choose your habits, your habits will choose your results for you. And so you have to create a life full of habits that are going to put you in the direction that you want to go. So for me, it's just a, it's like, like looking at like a farmer, like you can go put the seed in the ground, you can till the soil, you can, you know, you can water, you know, water the seed and take care of it and create an environment where, you know, the earth can take its natural course of growing stuff, but you have to create the right environment for growth. And so for me, my right environment for growth was, you know, it's like just getting up in the morning and, you know, being grateful and spending time in the word. I mean, I'm not, I'm not perfect at that, but I try to do that as best I can, spending time in the word, you know, reading a little bit of a good book, listening to audios and, uh, you know, going to the gym and, you know, just getting the day off, you know, to the, to the right start and just, being in activity mode, you know, our business is very activity driven. And so if we just, you know, if we stay in the groove, it's like going to the gym, you know, it's like, you don't have to go to the gym seven days a week and wreck yourself to get results. But if you go two or three days a week and you do it consistently week over week, eventually you're going to start seeing the results. But if you don't go to the gym for a few weeks, like you don't pick up where you left off, like you got to start over from scratch. Like you got to break out the cobwebs. You're going to be more sore, going to hurt more. And so um, in any kind of entrepreneurial endeavor, endeavor, like you got to stay in the groove, don't leave the gym so that you don't have to keep restarting. You just have to, you know, build small momentum upon small momentum, which just boils down to those daily disciplines of just putting good stuff in, you know, good stuff in, good stuff out and just creating that environment where, you know, you can have success. Yeah, and on that note, your gym analogy, I've experienced that. I can be all gung-ho, I'm going in, it takes weeks to get – the changes. And I, I feel like literally a week off, a week off the saddle, I'm screwed. And then when I get back in there, it takes <laughs> weeks again to get back to where, so it's not even worth it. And what I love is this whole day, daily discipline and consistency to get to that end result. Yep, exactly. What else do you do? Is it personal development? Is it, um, is it just reading these books and listening to podcasts? How else are you able to up level yourself? Uh, spending time with, you know, people that are at a higher level than you, you know, I have to be very, um, you know, you have to be very purposeful with that because it's very easy to kind of get sucked back into, you know, the, the common man land, so to speak, where everybody's just hanging out, talking around, talking about other people they're going out at night, drinking, you know, just doing a lot of non, not that they're bad things. A lot of times that they're just not going in the right direction or not the right direction they're just not moving forward at all and it's like as soon as you stop fighting for what you want what you don't want automatically starts to take over so it's like life's this 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 this, this territorial fight right so you got to be pursuing something because you're never standing still you're the move forward or moving backwards and so um so it's very easy to kind of get stuck back into that but you know i just have to be very purposeful with you know spending time around my mentors and and other leaders and people that are going the same direction that I am or that are just a higher level because, you know, if you're hanging around people that are at a higher level than you, they kind of demand that you come up to their level because um, they're not going to come down to your level. And so if you spend time around the right people, eventually you start to become more and more like that and you become a product of your environment. So it's really just about that environment you create, whether it is the audios or rhetoric, whether it is reading books, all that stuff is important, but especially who you spend your time with because there's probably people that you spend 10 minutes with that you should spend 10 hours with and there's people that you spend 10 hours with that you should only be spending five to 10 minutes with. All right. So you got to spend time around the right people. Yeah, no, I like that too. So if you could only give one nugget, one piece of advice you really want listeners to walk away with, what is that about this whole following your calling? Um, you just got to go with your gut sometimes, you know, I, I, being a, being a God person, you know, I think, uh, my, you know, and intuition, you know, just uh, my gut's usually moving me in the right direction or pulling me in the right direction. So you just got to go with your gut sometimes and just, and just go for it. I mean, there's probably stuff that you've been wanting to do or, you know, that you've been procrastinating on or just wait or just putting off because of fear or, 
or time or all of these extenuating circumstances. And sometimes like you just got to go for it. You know, I just, I don't want to get to the end of my life and, you know, I want to be the, the, the G I I, I'm glad I did guy instead of the, I wish I would have person. And so, so just go for it. You know, you can't hit a home run unless you're willing to swing the bat or whatever that is for you in your life. Just go for it and just see what happens. Worst thing that happens is you start, you know, you're back where you are right now, you know, but best thing that happens is it, you know, takes you to a whole different level of life. So many sport metaphors. Um, on that note, how do you, how have you learned to get in tune with your intuition? Um, for me, my intuition is, is again, it's pretty faith centered. So I think the more I grow in my faith and in the, in my spirituality, that's, that's, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, like I've got two daughters right now and I talk to them all the time. So as they get older, they're going to know what dad's voice sounds like. Even if they hear me in a group of a thousand people, mine's going to be, you know, it's going to stand out. And so, you know, the more I spend time growing in my faith and spending time with, with God, you know, it's like that, that I, I can hear his voice, you know, if you will, or I, I just, you know, my intuition is, is kind of that, that for me. So the more I spend time, the easier it is to know what I'm really supposed to be doing. Yeah. And I, I have found that intuition is different for all people. For me, it tends to be literally, it's a feeling or it's a thought or it's yep. a nudge for you. It seems to be this voice because that's that's what you hear and you're used to. So I think for each person, it's, it's doing the work to find, to get quieter, to find that voice, the nudge, the feeling and follow it. Yep. Yeah. Well, I have some rapid fire questions for you to wrap up the interview. The first one is what is a quote or motto that you live by? Quote or motto that I live by. Oof, that's a tough one. Um, I'm, I say go big or go home a lot. So I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> go, go big or go home. I just, uh, I don't like playing small. Like if you're going to do something, you got to go for it sometimes. Yeah. You only need, you only need one. You can strike out all you want, but you only need one good, one good crack to change the game for yourself. Yes. What is one of your favorite books that you highly recommend? My favorite book outside of anything scripture related would be um probably i'm trying to think it's a tough one um i could probably go back to the basic like the compound effect the darren hardy book just because it's very disciplined and habit habit centric and just you know creating those daily disciplines in your life that was probably my biggest impact book if you will okay and finally what advice would you give your younger self Advice I would give my younger self, um, just fail, you know, fail faster. You know, I mean, it's a, you, you, you can't, you're not going to win it. The only way you really fail in life is if you quit. And so just fall forward a lot faster, try stuff faster, go for it faster. Uh, you know, in our business, we go through lots of uh, um, exposures, so to speak, you know, it's a sales business. And so it's all numbers. And so if, if you go through the numbers faster, you get to that result faster. So whatever it is for you, just, just do it faster, you know, collapse time frames. You know, it's like, if you're trying to learn a language, you can sit there and, and do it, uh, you know, on an app on the phone, or you can go spend time in that country and collapse time frames and just full immersion. So, um, so just fully immerse yourself in whatever it is you're doing. So that's probably what I was just telling myself is just do everything that you're going to do. Just do it faster. Um, because you're going to get to that result you're looking for a little bit faster. Yeah. Or in other words, maybe go all in. Yeah, stop, yep, for sure. Stop half asking. Awesome. Well, and I know you go by <laughs> Zoe, so I will, I'll, I'll refer to you as that. So thank you so much for joining me today and, and sharing your insights. Well, thank you, Heather. I appreciate you having me on and for doing this for everybody. I know it adds a lot of value to a bunch of people. So I am, uh, I'm honored to uh, have been able to share with you guys.